We just got one of the most liked SBCs of the year. We're probably gonna get the most disliked SBC in the history of Ultimate Team. And we've got a huge player of the month on the way that's not Mbappe. I'm gonna show you guys all the investments you need to make right now during this market inflation. Welcome to Trading to Glory. If you're looking for cheap and reliable EAFC 24 coins, look no further than my new partner, Footloot, and use my code ELITE, E-L-Y-Y-T, for an extra 6% at checkout. Finally, guys, finally, the market is going up. We're seeing a rise in prices. Now, yesterday, I told you guys that we're looking at Informs. Team of the week number eight going up throughout the week, and they've already started, which is absolutely awesome. And even beyond that, triple threat cards and gold metas finally seeing a rise on the market, and not just a rebound, a significant rise and inflation, and it is honestly refreshing because the market crashed over and over and over and over again. And in my opinion, we've still got one more in us before we get to Black Friday, but let's enjoy the fruits of this market inflation while it exists. Now, Triple Threat was another promo that went up in price over the course of the last 24 hours. We saw a nice rise on Grealish from about 150 to 200. A lot of that because of that finesse shot plus, but just in general, these cards got too low. Now, I said that I was going to wait until later this week to buy. I was wrong. I should have bought yesterday, but it was definitely risky given the fact that cards like Centurions and Trailblazers, they actually dropped all throughout the week and got their lowest point on Thursday. So we'll regroup on Thursday, see if these cards are still worth investing in. But Cascarino ended up being the jackpot card that rose the most yesterday. And most of that was because of this new Bacha SBC, who I'll tell you what, she is her. What a card and honestly pretty good value. It gets good links given the fact that she's French and you can also link her uh, with other players that play in the Women's French League. So there's a lot of options right there. I did that card and it might be my favorite card in my team. I asked you guys for suggestions in yesterday's video on how to upgrade. Here's what we ended up with. Kubo plays on the wing in-game, and Modric plays center attacking mid with Bacha at center defensive mid alongside Kone. And Bacha, from center defensive mid, has three goals and two assists. That's not too bad, and she is everywhere. I'll tell you what everywhere. Let me know if you guys think I should start doing player reviews more like this. Maybe we go into gameplay some matches because I feel like I offer something that the other player review people don't. It's the fact that I absolutely suck at this game, okay? You get to see, are these cards going to make somebody who stinks look good. And I feel like that has some value to it. But today we're going to get into this market inflation, see which cards have room to go even higher and which cards maybe we want to sell before Friday when I expect the market to come back down. My investments so far have basically all been team of the week eight and Doku is one of the cards I bought the most of. For about 97,000 coins, I think we're looking at a good investment that's not gonna take us to the moon by any means, but a card that'll make us a safe five to 10% by the time Thursday rolls around. And when we're looking at Grimaldo at left mid, you did get that Salma Bacha who plays all of the exact same positions, left mid, left back, left wing, back, left wing. All the same position, so I think Ramaldo might have a delayed rise on his card because so many people have just got Bacha for their team in the same position. So I don't know if Grimaldo might be the uh, the jackpot player here. But when we look at Doku for 97, I think that's decently safe. Salma Perriuelo, that's not too bad either. I don't know if I'd go Usman Dembele just because the profit margins at some cards that are that expensive might just not be worth it. And then Upa Makano, he's at 98k right now, which is kind of high. But if you're getting for less than 95,000 coins, then you might be looking good by Thursday. And again, these aren't cards that are going to absolutely skyrocket in price, but make us some safe coins and hopefully get me over 6 million coins by the next episode. With Selma Bacha being able to also get upgrades with RTTK, being such good value and having such good stats already... It was one of the more welcomed and appreciated SBCs by the community so far this year. Are we going to see the same with this one? Probably not. In fact, a lot of people are saying this is going to be the most downvoted SBC in the history of Ultimate Team. And honestly, 
it probably will be. And if you're able to look past how insufferable she is as a person, then maybe there is some usability with this card because end of the eras are obviously one of the more juiced SBCs that we see. Looking at some of the cards that link to Rapino, we're just going to try to make coins off this SBC. Morgan and Smith are kind of the only usable cards that you can go with. Now, there is a right wing card that you can go with as well, but it doesn't really have the same value. Rodman is closer to fodder price now than she is anything else. 5,300 is the lowest she's been all year, but given the fact that she is fodder at this point, I don't know how much that's going to be affected by this Rapino SBC. But given the fact that Sophia Smith has already gone up to 584,000 coins, you can see that people are preparing for this SBC. Her low point was 526K, which means she's already risen about 60,000 coins. I'm probably not investing given the fact that she's already risen into the hype. And if I had invested, I'd probably sell into the hype because there's always a chance that EA will make this SBC bad value. But given the fact that the entire community already has decided that they basically don't want to do the SBC, there's a good chance that EA will actually make this super affordable just to entice people into it. And normally I ask you guys what you think of the upcoming SBC. Today might be interesting down in the comments. Even gold metas are on the rise. Yes, you heard that right. The same cards that have peaked at the beginning of November and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped some more have hit their bottom point at 134k and risen to 155 there for Van Dyke. And this is not just Van Dyke. We saw it for Valverde. We saw it for pretty much every gold meta card above the price of 50,000 coins have all gone up in the last 48 hours. So are we finally in the clear? Are we finally done with this pre-Black Friday market crash? Guys, the answer is no. No, guys, you never learn. It's not over. It is about to go back down. And I don't want to start any panic because you are safe for the next day or so. But let's take a look at what happened last year. Did this ever happen after the weekend was over? Did cards rise on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at all last year during November? Let's take a look. They started to drop in November. But on Monday... Tuesday, you could see a rebound on some of these cards. Van Dyke went from 185 all the way to 196. The next week, we saw the card stable on Monday, Tuesday, even though they didn't rise, and then dropped into the new promo. Did they rise on Tuesday? They did. They rose from Saturday all the way to Tuesday and then dropped even harder. And then the biggest crash of all of them was the week leading up to Black Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's Black Friday right there, another drop, and then if we take a look at what happens the week following Black Friday, that's the rebound that we're waiting for. That's where we're going to make our profits. Do we invest on Black Friday weekend? Absolutely. That's when we're going to get in. Black Friday weekend, a huge rise from 80k to 120 in just about two weeks after Black Friday is over. So that's what we're waiting for. This rise is just temporary. Some of these cards are going to go back down in price in just the coming days. I think Friday is the day you want to have sold all of your gold metas by. You're probably safe to hold throughout Tuesday, but even Wednesday and Thursday, as we've seen from previous years, you probably want to be out of them. In our Discord, which is, by the way, free, you can join with the link down below. We have a few predictions. This one from Fut Donk, and it's his Team of the Week prediction. Mbappe, Lua, Benzema, Rodrigo, Sané, who we'll bring back up in a second, Sarabia, Trosser. There's some good cards in this Team of the Week if EA do end up choosing these guys. Of course, it depends on what EA go with. But Mbappe is the card that we want to start uh, our focus on because Mbappe is the favorite to win Player of the Month for League 1. It could be Zaire Emery, it could end up being Gullivan, but those are the three that are nominated, and Mbappe is the front runner. If Mbappe gets into the team of the week on Wednesday, then I think that Mbappe might not get to be the player of the month. If he's not into the team of the week, it's almost a guarantee, in my opinion, that he is going to end up winning the player of the month. So we'll see what EA do with the team of the week this week. He scored a hat trick, so if he's not in team of the week, it's them basically telling us, hey, player of the month Mbappe is on his way. It's kind of what they did with Jude Bellingham last month. So be on the lookout for player of the month uh, Mbappe and Team of the Week Mbappe. We also have a Moments SBC on the way. This is confirmed. The stats are not confirmed. Hopefully they give him more pace because as a Dortmund fan, I want Sabitzer to be usable. But he's not the only Bundesliga card coming to the game. 
Bundesliga Player of the Month is also on its way. Kane has basically won it already, and it's probably going to come out on Friday morning. That's my prediction for that. And Kane is a usable card. We've seen his Trailblazer. We've seen uh, his Inform. Those are cards that people use. It's not going to be the most meta card in the game, but it's definitely usable. And if they give him an untradeable, we already have the Sabitzer, which is kind of changing focus a little bit towards Bundesliga already. We could see some Bundesliga links go up in price. Musiala, Goretzka, Coman, Upamecano, even Neuer maybe in goal. But Upamecano is already an investment we talked about earlier just because he's in Team of the Week 8. This is another reason for him to go up. So that's why I think he might be a card that I buy a little bit more of this morning. So these are the kind of cards that could get some focus and uh, get some uh, some rise in price just because of that player of the month, Kane. And they haven't risen yet, so we're getting this prediction a little bit earlier, getting in before these rises because we've already obviously seen that rise with Sophia Smith. Maybe if we get in early enough, we can actually sell these cards into the hype of the player of the month game. And that game might not be good value or anything, but we can just sell into the hype and not worry about it in the end. That's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Our secret comment word of the day, we're going to switch it up. We're just going to make it the word Kiwi. So if you put the word Kiwi in your comment down below anywhere in the comment, I'm going to go ahead and drop a heart on that comment. I appreciate you guys. Again, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and watch that video. It's a banger as well. If you liked this one, you're going to like that one. I'll see you in the next one, though. Peace out.